Um, so welcome to our devotions. Welcome to the my bedroom. It's the one place that I've got that I can um, spend some time. Sorry, this uh, thing is a little bit out of focus. So I'm just going to see what I can do here. Maybe put it on this side. What do you guys think? Uh, trying to do it all. I think we're okay. Are we okay? So I just want to do... Um, share something that was on our heart this morning, uh, something that I've been thinking about for the last few days. And um, it's a scripture that some of you might know, some of you might love, some of you might have quoted, um, but it's, it's from 1 Corinthians 13. And I just want to share uh, it from the Passion Translation. It says this, love is the motivation of our lives. And it says, if we were to speak with the eloquence of earth's many languages and in heavenly tongues of angels, yet yet did not express ourselves with love, our words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. And if we were to have the gift of prophecy with the profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possessed unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but had not learned how to love, then I am no nothing. And I love that because learning how to love is part of a process, right? We are, we are taught how to do things in our lives. We are taught how to be kind. Like even if you've got kids in your home, that's, that's a responsibility to teach them how to be kind, how to share, how to be encouraging, right? So it's like this, this love that is learned, this love that is taught. It says, and if I were to be so generous and give away everything I own to feed the poor and offer my body uh, to be burned as a martyr without love, the pure motivation of love, I would gain nothing of value. And then it says this, love is large and incredibly, incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to others. Love does not brag about one's own achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame or disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong or an injustice. Love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others love never takes failure as a defeat for it never gives up and you know when some of you might be able to quote that scripture off by heart some of you might have used that as a foundation upon which you try and live your life right um where it becomes the benchmark of this is how i want to behave and i don't know how many of us have actually prayed those prayers god i need to be more patient help me be more patient god help me be more kind i need, I need you I, I want this to flow out of my life but can i just say for a second is that sometimes we set this scripture which it is as um as the as the sort of the expectation level of what we're trying to achieve of what we're trying to live up to from a platform that we're trying to to reach so that this can be something that comes out of our lives but i don't know if you've ever heard that saying is that you cannot give what you haven't yet received and so today I want to actually speak to us about the fact that this love, before, before we try and make it our, our goal to live this way, we actually need to take a step back and actually receive it because this is the way God loves us. And so I want to encourage you this morning that when you sit about like how you're going to go about your week this, this week, last week Chesan spoke about and we had a sisterhood meeting and it was phenomenal. And it's not just sisterhood oh, for the ladies. It is, it is a principle and a virtue and a value that we can all build our lives on, on kindness. Like how are we appropriating kindness in our lives? How does it look as it outworks in and through our lives? And so this is the same thing this morning that I want to just pick up on. In, 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 the, in the season that we find ourselves in is that whether you've been in, in a close confinement in, with the people in your home, whether you're watching what's going on outside your doors in the nations of the world, this is something that actually the world requires. Do you know, we can't, we can't start trying to put an expectation on us when we're not having it in us. And so I want to I wanna read it slightly differently to us this morning. I want to read it in a way that it's something that actually we can take and we can say, okay, God, this is how you love me. You love me with incredible love, a large love, a love that, that extends beyond every single thing in my life that I don't like because there's things in our lives, if we were to be honest, that we wish we didn't feel, we wish we didn't think, we wish we didn't have to walk through and God goes I know all that stuff but I love you it says he's incredibly large and incredibly patient with you 
And so this morning, I want to remind you that we have a God that is so patient with you. His love is so gentle. He gently guides us with a firm hand, but gently guides us and leads us. It says that his love is consistently kind in his dealings with you. Do you know when you look at the scriptures where it says even his discipline, it's his kindness that, that he would step into our lives and say, okay, let me, let me help you here. In Psalm 139, it's the one where it says he formed me, he knitted me in my mother's womb. He knows every single thing. Before I think anything, he knows it. Right at the end, it says, God, search me and see if there's anything in my heart that is, is leading me on a, on a pathway of pain. And you know, this is the God we serve. He says, I'm going to be consistently kind in my dealings with you it doesn't envy it doesn't po boast he's not proud the thing is he's put every single thing in you for you to succeed so he celebrates you he wants you to succeed he wants you to experience this love this safe place it says he does not traffic in shame and disrespect you've got a God that if you're feeling any bit of shame, if there's stuff that he's dealing with, he's not dealing in shame with you. He's dealing in love and patience and gentleness. And if he's working in you, in these close proximities of our house and his word and his, and this rooms you find yourself in and the conversations you find yourself in, if he's stirring up stuff in your heart, it's not to stir up shame and disrespect. It's for him to actually say, I'm gently leading you into fullness and wholeness and I'm taking you on this path. And then it says, he works in honor. Do, he, do you know, that is one of the currencies of, of heaven, of the kingdom, is honoring each other. Loving and honoring each other. It comes together like that. Do you know, the other thing is that I want to remind you is that he's not easily irritated with us. And I say silly things on a daily basis. I say stuff that I'm like, why did that come out of my mouth? I have moments where I think, how did I get to that point? But the thing is, when we actually immerse ourselves in this passage and we, we look at it, it's like he's, he's not even easily irritated or quick to take an offense because he knows your frailties. He knows everything about you. He knows when, when, when we come and we go and what mistakes we're going to make. But he is positioned in this sort of love so that we could benefit and become the people that he's created us to be, right? It says here that he joyfully celebrates when we walk in honesty and he finds no delight in wrongdoing or injustice. He loves us in a place that is a safe place and a shelter. Do you know another translation or another scripture? It says, love drives out all fear. Wouldn't you love to be on the receiving end of this love? Because often we can judge where we're at with our, with our human um, sort of dealings with each other of how we're receiving this love and how we've been given this love. Because as much as we're looking and judging somebody else's expression of their love, they're looking at us and judging our expression of our love. And so it's a two-way street. It's a place where this becomes the, the, the um, exhortation, the expectation of, listen, the pure love of God is this. And it says that, you know, if we're wrapped up in this love, could you imagine how safe that feels? In a place where you're completely accepted, celebrated, um, uh, there's a purity, there's a patience, there's a, there's a constant just pouring into you to see you succeed. Because you know what it says? It says that his love will never stop believing in you. Do you know the God of heaven who created you will never, ever stop believing in you? It actually says that he never even takes our failures as a defeat. And, you know, that is incredible when you think about that. What have you done that, that, that's weighing heavily on your heart? What have you wished you just didn't, you didn't have to experience? You, could, you wish you could just turn back and, and undo that. God doesn't even take those moments as defeat. He's, you know why? Because he's still believing in you. He's still believing the best for you. He's still saying, I will never, ever give up on you. Do you know, sometimes we wonder, God, when are you going to come back? And it says by his mercy, it's for his mercy that he still hasn't come back and wrapped this whole earthly experience up because he's still believing and he's still trusting and he's still extending mercy for people to make right with him. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? But this is what I want to finish up with. If we allow this love, this perfect love, this God love, this is the love that he loves us with to penetrate our lives and to actually break things open in our lives. This is what the commentary says. That this word, this love word, where it says, if I didn't express myself in this love, in Aramaic, it means huba, 
And you know what that means? And I love it. It means to set on fire. It means that if we love in a way that actually we express ourselves in a love that sets on fire. Do you know, if Jesus, if we receive this love from God that actually starts consuming us, it starts burning within us, it ignites something within us. The, the picture that I see is that, you know, like a wildfire that just starts, but imagine it being something that we are so consumed with, the love of God that actually sets us a light, that sets us on fire, that when we step into a citizen, situation we're burning that it sets another life on fire that the love of God that just becomes a wildfire of love on the earth could you imagine what that would look like but we need to understand we need to allow this perfect love to set us on fire to set everything that burn away that dross burn away that stuff refining fire within us and it comes from that perfect beautiful place of love Love and God, He does that. This place, this perfect love does that. And so I just want to encourage you today, before we start fighting on the outside, let God start working on the inside. So that when we start moving into all He has for us, that we're actually saying, God, for me to understand this love and for me to intentionally walk out this love and for me to walk out a love that sets on fire the things that are around me, that ignites a patience, a kindness, a gentleness, a, one that celebrates others, one that does not get easily angered, one that does keep no record of wrong. I want that in me, then let him do it in you. Receive that love from him today. And so I want, I want to encourage you that if you take this word and just go and read it in 1 Corinthians 13, read it in every translation meditate on that and say, God, I want to find that safe place in you. I want to experience that. I want that to actually ignite something in me so that actually it becomes a driving force that when no, no matter where you go, when, when, when something is on fire, it ignites other things. And so I pray that over you today. I love you and I hope you're encouraged and I hope you have an amazing day. See you next time. Bye.